Yes, the tables of stone were found in the Ark of the Covenant. I personally, personally removed them with the assistance of four angels who lifted the mercy seat, which I would estimate weighs about 900 pounds of solid gold. And one of these angels told me to take the tables of stone out of there. He said, God wants everyone to see those. If it's true that God sent four angels to Wyatt to lift off that mercy seat and to get the tablets out, the purpose that God has here is for you to use this as evidence. Well then, where is that evidence? And somebody say, well, can you show me some evidence? And I can't. Whenever you come across a video or an article about the Ark of the Covenant or Noah's Ark, inevitably somebody will bring up the name Ron Wyatt. For those of you who don't know who Ron Wyatt is, he's an American, a self-proclaimed archaeologist that went to Israel many times to do excavations. And he claimed to discover a lot of different biblical artifacts and sites. Let's have a look at some of them. So among the different artifacts and sites that Ron Wyatt claims to have discovered, we have Noah's Ark. We have the tombs of Noah and his wife. We have the location of Sodom and Gomorrah. We have the Tower of Babel. We have the site of the Israelites crossing the Red Sea. We have chariot wheels and other relics of the army of Pharaoh at the bottom of the Red Sea. Even the chariot wheels. We have the site of the biblical Mount Sinai. We have the Ark of the Covenant. We have the site of the crucifixion of Jesus. We even have Jesus' own blood that he claims to have discovered. Now, a few of these sites, such as the location of the tomb of Noah, the location of the Tower of Babel, the location of Sodom and Gomorrah, they're not new, okay? There are locations in the Holy Land that people have believed to be, this is the location. Uh, they've believed it for hundreds of years, if not thousands of years, okay? But Ron Wyatt comes around and claims to discover a, a totally different site and uh, he claims that his site is the actual site. Now to summarize the claims of Ron Wyatt, well, he claims to have found everything. I mean, he claims to have found everything. We got the Ark of the Covenant, we've got the, the Noah's Ark, you know, we've got Jesus' own blood and the crucifixion site, everything. I mean, Ron Wyatt claims to have discovered everything. So the question is, what about biblical scholars? What about professional biblical archaeologists? What do they have to say about what Ron found? According to this Wikipedia article, Wyatt was not considered credible by professional archaeologists and biblical scholars. Apparently here, the Garden Tomb, or the Tomb of Jesus, is another site that Wyatt claimed to have found. But there is an organization called the Council of the Garden Tomb Association in London, and they totally refute the claim of Wyatt. They said here that they've observed, I mean, eyewitnesses of Wyatt's excavations, and they said here, as far as we are aware, nothing was discovered to support his claims, nor have ever seen any evidence of biblical artifacts or temple treasures. Okay, okay, I know there's some people out there that are saying, well, you know, of course there are people that are gonna refute Wyatt's claims. But I want you to think about this for a minute. Has ever God chosen one man, okay? Has this ever happened in history where God chose one man to bring about all of this revelation, okay? Wyatt actually even claims to be the fulfillment of many biblical prophecies, Wyatt actually even quotes scripture and says that he is the fulfillment of those scriptures, you know, in testifying about God and his artifacts and his work and his gospel. Wyatt actually elevates himself to be something like that of an apostle and even greater than the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ themselves. I mean, Wyatt makes himself out to be someone who does something that not even the apostles of the Lord has done. He claims that God chose him alone at such a time as this to be the man through whom the world will see the evidence of God, the evidence that the Bible is actually true. Now I want you to ask yourself a question. Now I encourage all of you 
just to sit back a little bit. I know there are some of you that, you know, you're Wyatt fans and all that kind of thing, but I want you just to sit back a little bit, okay? Just assess the situation. Let's be honest. Let's try as far as possible to look at this from a very realistic point of view. And to be honest here, it's either that Wyatt is right and many other Christian and Jewish authorities are wrong, okay? It's either he's right and many other authorities, including Christian authorities, are all wrong. Or perhaps something is not exactly right with Wyatt's testimonies. Now, I don't believe that there is such a thing as undeniable evidence. I mean, you can deny anything, okay? You can take any kind of evidence, any kind of proof, and people can deny it, okay? There's no such thing as undeniable evidence. However, we must look at something and say, is this beyond a reasonable doubt? It's either that Ron Wyatt is the Messiah of archeology, span it's either that Ron Wyatt is just as good as almost Jesus himself in fulfilling all these prophecies, or perhaps there is a little bit something wrong there and the stuff that he claims to have found is not exactly accurate. People who are delusional often exalt themselves to positions that are just very high. You know, for example, paranoid schizophrenic will make themselves out to be so important, like the President of the United States, that they warrant all these attacks, that they're just so important in the world that people try to attack them all the time, okay? That's a paranoid schizophrenic. Other schizophrenics still exalt themselves to a position of being so important. They make themselves out to be so important that they alone get this revelation, that they alone have seen this or witnessed this. And a lot of times their testimonies don't necessarily add up. For example, I know a person who was schizophrenic and this person claimed to have personally witnessed a very, very horrific thing in life. I mean, horrific, horrific. There was nobody else on the scene. And although this person claimed to have witnessed this, it was quite a while ago, okay, years uh, from, the, from the date that they claimed to have seen this, and they did not do what a reasonable person would do, and that is contact the authorities, okay? So uh, you gotta look for signs of delusional people, schizophrenia, like if this person actually went to this place and actually saw this, did they prepare for the event as a reasonably thinking person would, and or did they react to that event as no reasonable thinking person would? You gotta ask these questions. Now here we got archeologist Joe Zias of the Israeli Antiquities Authority, and he said that Ron Wyatt is neither an archeologist, nor has he ever carried out a legally licensed excavation in Israel or Jerusalem. In order to excavate, one must have at least a BA in archeology, span which he does not possess does not possess, despite his claims to the contrary. His claims, says Mr. Zias, fall into the category of trash, which one finds in tabloids, such as the National Enquirer, the Sun, etc. So in response to that, Wyatt's official organization, Wyatt Archaeological Research, claims that the IAA have always been aware of the excavations and issued verbal permits for most of them. Verbal permits? Just verbal permits by the Israeli Antiquities Authority? Now, let, let, me, get, let me get this straight now, okay? Wyatt is a man who claims to have went to Israel and obtained verbal permits to do excavations in Israel. Now, who, who, who would go to Israel and perform excavations and just get verbal permits without proper licensing? 
Okay, who would just say, oh, hey, buddy, uh, can I dig here? Can I excavate here? Yeah, Ron, you can. Yeah, you can. No problem with that. Oh, okay, that's all I need is just your verbal permit, and I'm just going to start excavating. Hmm, does that sound a little bit strange to you? So let's move on to the subject of the Ark of the Covenant. So Wyatt claims during one of his excavations to have found a tunnel under the crucifixion site and he claims to have found the ark of the covenant okay and on the ark of the covenant he claims to have seen blood and he just goes over to the ark now first of all first of all okay where was everybody else where are the witnesses there were no witnesses there are no pictures no photos no documentation to prove that he actually did that excavation. Well, because they give him verbal permits. Who walks in to the IAA in Israel and just walks out with a verbal permit? Um, okay. But not only that, but Wyatt claims to have found the Ark and went up to the Ark. Okay, no. Take into consideration, the scriptures are very clear. The Ark of the Covenant was like the throne of God Almighty on the earth. I mean, in the Bible, somebody touched it and they were instantly killed. They instantly dropped dead. And I mean, that's another story all in itself, but I believe that there were two reasons why uh, they dropped dead. It's like, oh, God's Ark is gonna fall. I'm gonna, I'm gonna save the Ark. A very arrogant, a very uh, disrespectful act just to reach out your hands and touch such a holy, the most holy object on earth. So that person dropped dead. Only the Levites are allowed to touch such an object. This object, the Ark of the Covenant, is so powerful. Just being in the presence of it could mean life or death. I mean, when it went into the house of Obed-Edom in the scriptures, the house of Obed-Edom was very blessed. But then again, when it went into the territory of the Philistines, well, they ended up getting diseases and dying. I mean, if you are a righteous man in the presence of the Ark of the Covenant, you were blessed. But if you were not very righteous, you were, let's say, not blessed, okay? So the Ark of the Covenant was like the most powerful the most powerful thing on the earth. You think that, let's say electricity, you got like millions of volts surging through these power lines. If you touch them, you, it would mean instant death. The power of God is much greater than that of electricity. If you can't handle these power lines without taking certain precautions and doing it in a certain way, it means death. In the same way, you have to be very, very careful in the presence of the Ark of the Covenant to do things exactly the way they're supposed to be done or death would be sure. But Ron Wyatt, he finds this Ark of the Covenant that he claims is hidden away in some cave. I do not believe that the most powerful, the most holy artifact that the earth has ever seen could be just stashed away and forgotten about, lost somehow. I don't believe that. I believe that the Ark of the Covenant is not lost. I believe that there is a lot of evidence. I believe it's beyond a reasonable doubt that the Ark of the Covenant is actually in Ethiopia. Now, the reason I believe that is because there is a lot of documentation, historical documentation about that and archaeological evidence as well. But that's another huge topic and I'm not going to get into that in this video. However, if Ron Wyatt's claims are true, the most holy, the most powerful object on earth just somehow just got lost, somehow just got stuffed away in a cave and everybody just forgot about it. I don't think so. Now I've watched numerous videos of Ron Wyatt explaining his discovery of the Ark of the Covenant. And you know, a lot of times he wraps 
what he calls evidence in a just a theological rambling instead of Wyatt just coming out and straightforward just telling the story just straight on telling the story just being forthwith he he wraps his so-called testimony or his witness his story in so much theological rambling I mean, he really causes people to lose the entire claim of evidence that he has in this theological mess, okay? Now, he does know his scripture. There's no doubt about that. Like he quotes 1 Kings chapter 25 saying, you know, when the Babylonians came into Israel, uh, they took a lot of the artifacts of the temple away, but they didn't mention the Ark of the Covenant. And in 1 Kings chapter 25, there's a list of things they carried off from the temple. Missing from that list is the Ark of the Covenant, the table of showbread the menorah or the candlestick, the golden altar of incense, and the large golden censer that the high priest put uh, spices in and burned them uh, when he went into the most holy place. We found all of those, I found all of those in this chamber with the Ark of the Covenant, the whole, all of those things mentioned that were not on the list that went to Babylon. And in Ezra, there's a list of things that Darius sent back, the Persian king, and uh, it's identical to the one in Second King, or First Kings uh, 25. And he says the reason why they didn't mention the Ark of the Covenant, now this is where he reads a lot of stuff into the scripture that it doesn't say. He says that Jeremiah or somebody... What this statement is saying is that something went on the earthly throne of God. Now, Jeremiah or somebody was directed by God to carry the Ark of the Covenant out of Jerusalem before it got destroyed and hide it in this chamber where I found it, which was right below the crucifixion site. Jeremiah or somebody was directed by God to do this. Where did he get that from? I mean, he reads so much into the scripture that it doesn't say. So not only did Wyatt read all that into scripture, which it doesn't say, uh, he claims to have found it. And he claims that it's right underneath the crucifixion site. Now, who would know exactly where the cross was positioned? The Church of the Holy Sepulchre is the traditional site of the crucifixion and burial of Jesus. There's another site called Gordon's Calvary. Some people believe that Jesus was crucified at that spot. Now, the traditional site of the crucifixion of Jesus is at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. The story goes that Constantine the Great ordered his mother at about 325 AD to go find the spot, the actual site that Jesus was crucified. So she went to the Holy Land and she was directed to the spot where now we have the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. But then some 1500 years later, another person comes along and says, oh look, I think this might be the spot where Jesus was crucified and not at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Well, you know what? I would tend to believe the earlier traditional site as opposed to somebody who just strolls along 1500 years after, okay? Actually, it was 1800 years after, but 1500 years after that the Church of the Holy Sepulchre site was established as the site. Apparently, Ron Wyatt doesn't go with the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. He goes with, I, I, I don't even know what he goes with. It sounds like he goes with Gordon's Calvary site. So Ron Wyatt claims that he knows the exact spot, actually the exact hole where the cross stood, okay? And he said that he found the Ark of the Covenant some 20 feet underground, directly under that hole. And he says what happened was when Jesus died, you know, it says in the scriptures that the rocks were split 
And he said what happened was the blood from the crucifixion ran down all the way down 20 feet through limestone and dripped on the Ark of the Covenant. And thus the blood of Jesus was sprinkled on the Ark of the Covenant. Now, just considering that story alone, just that story alone, there is so much wrong with it, okay? Well, first of all, if the rocks split, now, in context, in the scripture, it says the rocks split and the bodies of many holy men that have died before were raised to life. Now, uh, in that context, you would say, well, the rocks of the tombs where these holy men were buried, that is what split and, you know, let these, <laughs> let these resurrected saints out, okay? But Ron claims that the rocks split right there on Golgotha and the blood dripped right down onto the Ark of the Covenant. Now, if the rocks split that much, wouldn't the cross fall over? Medically speaking, the crucifixion did not involve that much blood, okay? There was a lot of flogging that happened before then. A lot of blood was lost before then. That's why he didn't even have strength to carry the cross, okay? That's why by the time he got to the cross, he's like, I am thirsty. When he was first crucified, I mean, he was super thirsty because he lost that much blood. Now, according to Ron Wyatt, the blood that dripped down through the cracks was the blood that came from his side. And it was blood and water, he said, that went down onto the Ark of the Covenant. Ron Wyatt claims that that fulfilled the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus on the Ark. Now, first of all, according to the law that was given through Moses, we're not supposed to have the blood of a human put on the ark, okay? Second of all, you're not supposed to have the water on the ark too, water from some somebody who's, who's half dead, okay? That is not supposed to be put on the ark. Second of all, according to the law, now if you're supposed to go by the law, if you're supposed to have the law fulfilled, like cross every T and dot every I, according to the law, there's only one way the blood is supposed to be applied on the ark, and that is by the high priest in power at the time, okay? That's according to the law. That is fulfilling the law to the T, dotting every I. It has to be done properly, okay? It can't just somehow flow down blood and water from somebody who's half dead from, the, from somebody's side and, and somehow run through 20 feet of limestone and drip on the Ark of the Covenant and whoa, you know, everything's fulfilled. Where do you see that in the Torah? Where do you see that in the Torah? That is not there at all. I mean, no wonder there are so many Jews who look at these Christians and go, man, you have no clue what you're talking about. You are out to lunch theologically. No wonder. But Ron Wyatt himself claims that he can't show the evidence. I have been told that I can't show physical proof. Now, ordinarily, see, I do have a bit of pride. See, I do have a bit of pride. Ordinarily, I don't say anything without I can prove it. Because it's rather embarrassing to make a statement and somebody say, well, can you show me some evidence? And I can't. And then he goes further than that. I mean, the story doesn't end there, okay? So he walks in and just basically, you know, just goes up to the ark, you know, as if it's like just an everyday thing, just goes up to the ark and he just happened to have some stuff on him to scrape human blood off of the ark and to take it to a lab to have it tested, okay? So if you take blood to a lab to have it tested, DNA test, you have to pay a lot of money. And if you pay a lot of money, they are definitely going to produce a report for you. It's not going to be just verbal like these verbal permits that he just somehow obtains. But of course, Wyatt cannot produce any receipts, cannot produce any documentation whatsoever from this lab. But what he said was, is that these people at the lab, they, you know, they took the blood, the sample of the dried blood, they put it in saline and they reconstituted the blood as much as they could, 
And then they came back to Ron and they said, well, we found something very unique that there's only 24 chromosomes here. There's supposed to be 46 chromosomes, you know, 23 from the father, 23 from the mother. But he's, but they say there's only 20, there's, there's 24, which is 23 from the mother and one Y chromosome from the father, which makes him a male. So according to Wyatt, they asked him, well, whose blood is this? And Wyatt breaks down and cries and says, it's the blood of your Messiah. Then they said, this blood is alive. And then they said, whose blood is this? I said, it's the blood of your Messiah. And yes, Ron does have a history of crying here and crying there. I could be back in the States in my comfortable home with my beautiful wife. I could knock down $500 a day every day. This cost me money. But don't think for a minute I consider that a sacrifice. After what God has done for me, Anything I can do for him, it's an honor and a privilege. But my question is, where is the documentation? If you're gonna take something to a lab, you're gonna have some kind of documentation. Where are the witnesses? Why doesn't Ron bring these lab workers with him or at least get them on the phone or have some kind of video with them? Why not? Where is the evidence? Where are the audio recordings? Where are the videos? Where, where is the documentation? None of it. Absolutely none of it. Ron Wyatt produces no evidence. So someone in the audience asked like, okay, so that blood came from the cross or came from his side and it was enough to actually flow through 20 feet of limestone onto the ark where Basically, that's impossible, okay? I mean, again, you're not gonna have a lot of blood from somebody who's already been flogged to the point where you can't even identify who it is, and that's the case with Jesus. I mean, it says in the scriptures, he was so beaten, he was so torn apart, uh, you couldn't even identify who this was. And that's before he got to the cross. Now, when I was down there, taking the blood sample and you know, just being totally stunned by everything. I noticed that there was no dirt, dust, rainwater, stains, nothing on the Ark of the Covenant or the mercy seat. So I thought, man, what happened? Nothing came down through that crack except the blood of Jesus. So Wyatt says there was no dirt, no dust, no rain, no stains on the blood, no dirt, no dust, no rain, no stains on the blood. How can blood flow through a crack in the earth 20 feet without coming across any dirt, any dust? I mean, in that case, that crack must have been very, very wide enough for it just to go right directly from Jesus' side all the way down to the ark. And if it was that wide, why didn't Jesus fall in? Why didn't anybody else fall in? And yes, Ron Wyatt cries frequently. We got a letter from her. She said he had come home and he was a better husband and father than he had ever been. And he says, in his word, what more could I have done? In my vineyard, the answer is nothing. But you see, you gotta look through all this false humility. And you got to see how this man is promoting himself to be somewhat of greater than a prophet. Like God shows Ron Wyatt to prove to the world that Jesus died and that he's real. God chose Ron Wyatt to do that. Um, sorry, Wyatt, but 
first of all, your story doesn't make sense. Second of all, Jesus said you are more blessed if you just believe the scriptures as opposed to challenging God to prove himself. So Wyatt claims to be in this chamber, underground, 20 feet under the exact spot of where, the, where Jesus was crucified, how he knew that, he doesn't say. The way Wyatt talks about it, how he goes up to the ark and how he messes with the ark and all this kind of stuff that he did, he had less respect for the Ark of the Covenant than the people who did who found the tomb of King Tut. So someone asked Ron, well, like, didn't the Israeli authorities go in and take it? Didn't they want to go in there and take the Ark? And Ron said, oh yeah, there was six men who put on Levitical garbs. Levitical garbs, he claims. Sir. Did the Israelites leave it down there or did they remove it? Did okay, did the Israelites move it, leave it down there or did they move it? Uh, they left it there. However, it was not a voluntary thing. Uh, six men dressed in Levitical garbs. Levitical garbs. Who can just go in Israel right now and just find six men with Levitical garbs? But Ron claims to have six men there that, that wore Levitical garbs. And according to Ron Wyatt, they started going through the tunnel and they all died before they got there. Six men dressed in Levitical garbs went in there to bring the Ark of the Covenant out and to take it to some more secure location was the object, they died about 70 feet into the tunnel. Once again, Wyatt doesn't produce any kind of documentation. He doesn't give any kind of names, no news stories, no obituaries, no police reports, nothing. Of course, n no evidence whatsoever. It's all just verbal. And Ron, being the man of the universe, I mean, being the man of all ages, only he, he says, only he was able to go in and to retrieve those bodies. No one else could go. And I had to help retrieve their bodies. Nobody else would go in there. They had uh, radio communicators and apparently their screams and all of that sort of thing uh, were such that nobody, even, you know, callous security people, nobody would go in there. None of the security or the soldiers or anything like that would ever dare go in there. And then a lady asked Wyatt, has anybody compared your sample? By the way, where is your sample? He didn't bring, again, no evidence. No evidence whatsoever. Where's your sample? Where's the sample? Where's the documentation? What lab did you take it to? Interview the people who actually did the, the, the tests. But anyway, a lady asked, you know, did anybody compare that sample of blood with the blood that was found on the Shroud of Turin? And Ron said, there was no blood on the Shroud of Turin. There's no blood on the Shroud of Turin, which is absolutely not true. Just like 95% of everything he says is not true. It, it, that's not true. Yes, ma'am. Oh, the Shroud of Turin. Now, if the blood on the mercy seat matches the blood on the Shroud of Turin, and if it doesn't match, would that make the Shroud of Turin a fake? Because I've been hearing a lot about this lately. Okay. What the lady is asking, has the blood on the mercy seat been compared with the blood on the Shroud of Turin? And if they're not a match, does that make the Shroud of Turin a fake? Uh, the comparison has not been made. However, there is no blood on the Shroud of Terror. But Wyatt claims to have had a camera in the chamber where the Ark of the Covenant was. And he takes his camera and he takes a couple pictures. And then later on, when he goes to get it developed, he said it was just all white. Like it just came out like all white. My attempts to photograph this, the Ark of the Covenant early on resulted in the films that were totally exposed or whiteouts. 
And do I think that was something God did or was it bad to film or what? Well, uh, I fully intended to take pictures of that. Every other picture on those rolls of film turned out just fine. And so he said he went and told his wife about it and his wife didn't believe him. I told my wife, you know, what had happened. And she is a very careful individual. Just because her husband tells her something, she don't necessarily believe it. As a matter of fact, uh, she keeps a much closer eye on me than anybody else does, and I have some folks that watch me like a hawk. Now, if Ron is a true man of God, if Wyatt is a true man of God, and if what he says is very reliable and accurate, the first person to stick up for him, the first person to know that would be his wife. Why is it that he said, in Wyatt's own words, why is it that his wife is more skeptical of him than anybody? Could it be that his wife just kind of secretly knows what he's like? If anybody would know Wyatt, it would be his wife. And his wife didn't believe him. So the story doesn't end there. So Wyatt digs himself even deeper, okay? I mean, the story doesn't end there. So Wyatt's got these two negatives uh, from his photos that he took apparently, uh, supposedly, of the Ark of the Covenant, and they didn't turn out at all. They're all just white, like overexposed. And so uh, he gave it to his wife to try to help him figure out how that happened or what, you know, what happened here. Now, you think of, okay, so what would they do? So let's just suppose for a minute that you lived back in the time before there were digital cameras and you wanted to have a certain photo analyzed. Where would you take it? Hmm, you know, they have photoshops, they have photo labs, you know, like they got these like blacks photography and these other kind of, you know, Japan photoshops and all these kind of specialty shops and people who actually specialize in photos. So where did Wyatt and his wife decide to send the photo for analysis? No, they didn't send it to a photo analysis place. They didn't send it to a professional photography place. They sent it to the space agency. What she did, she took the film, the negatives and the printout, and sent it to NASA, to their space investigation center down in uh, Florida. And uh, she contacted them by phone first to see who to send it to and all that. And asked them if they could figure out what had happened. They sent it to NASA. Of, co of course, NASA would know all about photography. I mean, they're photography specialists, right? I mean, if you want to know what happened to a certain picture that didn't turn out, then send it to NASA. And Ron said that he heard back from NASA and they said, well, we don't have a clue what the problem was. Well, she got the answer back in the, with the return of the film and the prints. And they gave her the type of emulsion used. They gave her the date the film was manufactured. They gave her all kinds of stuff. But they said, we don't have a clue what caused this problem. Do you think? No kidding. I mean, NASA is not a photo lab. And so Wyatt gets all super spiritual and he says, it was God that, just, that made it happen like that. And so the reason why God made it happen like that, because if there was a photo, if there was a photo, then uh, Israel would, would, would basically attack the, the Temple Mount and there would be a, a worldwide war of religions and there would be a bloodbath and, and all the world would pretty much end. Uh, so if so God did, and the reason for it, in my opinion, if I had got a good picture of that, I'd been running around hollering, I found the Ark of the Covenant, and I'd shown those pictures. Well, the Jewish people would have gone down and blown up the mosque, started building the temple, the Muslims would have declared a holy war and started killing all of us. There'd have been a bloodbath. Um, no, Wyatt. They would probably deny that photo. They'd probably look at it and say, <laughs> okay, and just put it aside there wouldn't be a bloodbath, Wyatt. Again, making himself out to be so important and just 
so powerful. The truth is, Wyatt, the truth is that if you had a photo, that wouldn't really do much of anything. You're saying that if a photo was was released, then it would it would cause a bloodbath and war and all this because people would say, oh, look at you found the Ark of the Covenant. But isn't that what you're saying anyway? Aren't you claiming to know exactly where the location is? Aren't you pinpointing the location anyway? It's like, I know exactly where the location is. I can take you to the X marks, the spot. Oh, and my followers and my staff, we can all go right to the spot. We can say right here, 20 feet under, right here is the Ark of the Covenant. But if I show you a picture, it'll cause the end of the world. But, but I'll tell you exactly where it is, right here. But the story doesn't end there, folks. Wyatt claims that four angels were there. Okay, four angels were there and they said to Ron, we want you to take the mercy seat off, the mercy seat off of the Ark of the Covenant. Now, for those of you who don't know, the term mercy seat, okay, it's it's kind of misleading because it's not a seat at all. It's just a lid. It's just a cover. Okay, a lot of translations, more modern translations of the Bible calls it the atonement cover. Okay, so it's not really a seat. It is just a lid, okay? And it's about 27 inches by 45 inches. It's not a very big lid, but it's a lid. Now, according to the scriptures, it was made of pure gold. But in context, it says in Exodus chapter 37 that it was wood overlaid with pure gold, okay? So it wasn't very heavy because the atonement cover or the mercy seat was only a fraction of the actual Ark of the Covenant itself. The Ark of the Covenant would have contained much more gold and material than the mercy seat actually contained. Nevertheless, the Ark of the Covenant was made so that four men could easily carry it. Okay, there was a pole, two poles, one on each side of the Ark of the Covenant, and there were supposed to be four different Levites that would actually carry this Ark. And it was made to be conveniently and easily carried. But Ron claimed not only to have the liberty just to go up to the mercy seat and scrape blood off of it, but also to try to remove it. And the angels had to help him, he said. Yes, the tables of stone were found in the Ark of the Covenant. I personally, personally removed them with the assistance of four angels who lifted the mercy seat, which I would estimate weighs about 900 pounds. He said that the mercy seat weighed about 900 pounds. 900 pounds. If that's the case, the Ark of the Covenant would have been, oh, I don't know, several tons. And these Levites, by the way, that carried the Ark were not very big men, okay? Levites, especially in those days, they were small. They were small men, okay? They were not very big men. But Ron claimed that just this, just this little lid, okay? 27 inches by 45 inches. It could have been super thin. Who knows how thick it was? And it couldn't have weighed that much because one man took care of the Ark of the Covenant while it wasn't being carried, okay? One man, the high priest, would go into the Holy of Holies and look after everything in there. If it was 900 pounds, I tell you, that high priest must have been woo, pretty buff, I'm telling you. Again, just to think about it, a 900 pound lid on a box that was made primarily of wood would have done a lot of damage. It wouldn't have been a good design. But Wyatt says it was 900 pounds and he needed four angels to, to help him. Four angels and one Ron Wyatt to take this lid off. And he says that the angels said, see those tablets in there? Take them, take them because People need to see the, the, those tablets. It's supposed to, this is, God wants you to take them. It's God's will for you to use these tablets as evidence. And one of these angels told me to take the tables of stone out of there. He said, God wants everyone to see those. And so Ron claims to have taken the tablets and then somehow given it back to the angels because he just didn't know what to do with them. And one of these angels told me to take the tables of stone out of there. He said, God wants everyone to see those. And so I took them out, backed up, stood there, froze them in place. And I, well, I just can't describe my physical 
state or mental state or anything else. If, if you know, I didn't have some physical evidence to prove it happened, I think I had a dream or something. But anyway, they are now available to be shown, but we won't say, uh, actually they're on a stone ledge right in the same chamber. That's where the angel put them after I handed them to him. I didn't know what to do it. But then he claims that he has a video and he has actual evidence of those tablets. But to my knowledge, nothing of the sort exists. Again, no evidence. And why disassemble the ark? Again, a very disrespectful thing to do. Now, I do say a lot about how Ron doesn't have any evidence. Now, I know some of you who know Wyatt's organization very well would say, oh yeah, Wyatt has a museum and there is evidence there. Well, okay, so he broke off a piece of stalactite off of somewhere and he claims that that was from where the ark was. He's got the stalactite, but he doesn't have what the angels and God told him to get. Uh, okay, can we prove that evidence as being true? I mean, it's hard to prove. And he's got these stones and these fossils. Oh, this is this is a fossil of wood from this particular artifact, and this is a fossil from that particular artifact. But there's really no proof. Yes, he's got some stones that he brought back. One stone he claims to, this is the stone that covered the hole where the cross stood. So, uh, I mean, much of the so-called evidence that Ron does have is something you really can't prove at all. If he actually did take a sample of blood and it really was Jesus' blood, then it would match the blood that was on the Shroud of Turin. There's just so much wrong with what Wyatt claims. Okay, now to go back to the blood, he says that the blood had 24 chromosomes instead of 46. Now, wouldn't that, I mean, first of all, would that even make a human? <laughs> I mean, Jesus had to be 100% human in order to fulfill the prophecies. In order to fulfill his mission on earth as Messiah, he had to have been perfect in health, and he had to have been 100% human. Having only 24 chromosomes is a chromosome abnormality to say the least. That's a very abnormal uh, creature there. I mean, that in itself could completely destroy the qualifications for being a Messiah. I mean, there's so much wrong with this. Now, Wyatt himself claimed to have been out, um, you know, unconscious for 45 minutes. So the realization hit me that the Ark of the Covenant was right in front of me in the blood of Christ was right in front of me on the mercy seat. I passed out for approximately 45 minutes. So that's how I felt. I had no visions, no dreams, no nothing. I just passed out. We went with my watch and it was 45 minutes after the point in time I had entered the chamber because I had reason to believe the ark was in there when I went in the chamber. Perhaps he did go down into some hole somewhere and somehow pass out for 45 minutes. Perhaps he had a dream and or a hallucination and he thought that that was true. Even he himself said that if I didn't have physical evidence, I would have thought it would, it would have been a dream or something. Uh, I, well, I just can't describe my physical state or mental state or anything else. If, if, you know, I didn't have some physical evidence to prove it happened, I think I had a dream or something. Why would he say that if it was for real? I mean, if it's for real, you'd say, listen, I know for sure it wasn't a dream. But apparently even Wyatt himself said if it wasn't for the physical evidence, I would have thought I had a dream. And by the way, where is the physical evidence? I'm talking about provable physical evidence. Remember what I said at the beginning? Physical evidence that is beyond a reasonable doubt, okay? You might not have it perfect, you might not have you know perfectly undeniable evidence, but at least beyond a reasonable doubt. 
You got your witnesses up there on the stand. You got your expert witnesses. You've got your documentation. It's beyond a reasonable doubt. But Ron doesn't have any of that other than a far-fetched story. Now I'm gonna just quickly touch on his Noah's Ark thing as well. Now he claims to have found Noah's Ark, okay? And he's got a picture about that one, okay? However, that picture is very different than what the Bible says. First of all, the measurements are different, okay? Second of all, the shape is different. Now, I know a lot of people, I know most Christians, they have the idea that Noah's Ark is like this boat shape, you know, like a ship, a big ship, you know, with the with the bow on the front with a point on it and then on, on the back. And this is what Ron pictured in his picture. He pictured a rock formation that looks similar to a boat. And I know this might blow a lot of you guys' minds, but if you really read the scriptures, and you don't come with any preconceived ideas or preconceived images in your mind, what the scriptures describe is an ark. An ark is a box. It's not a boat. I know a lot of you right there, I just lost you. But listen, this is what we're talking about here. The ark of the covenant is not a boat. The ark of the covenant is not a ship. The Ark of the Covenant is a box. The word Ark is just an old word that means box. Noah's Ark was like a floating container. And if you read it, it doesn't talk about sails. It doesn't talk about a ship with a bow with a pointy thing on the front. By the way, boats and ships that are made in, in that certain formation, they're made to cut through the waters with speed. They're made for traveling around the world. They're made for traveling. That's why they're shaped like that. So they can go whoosh, through the water just like an airplane can go through the air, okay? With a point on the front and sometimes a point on the back like a canoe so that you can go both ways very easily. But Noah's Ark was not made like that because he did not have travel in mind. It wasn't for traveling. It wasn't Noah Columbus, okay? It wasn't Christopher Columbus Noah, okay? It was just a floating container. So I'm sorry, Wyatt, but once again, your Noah's Ark might fit the description of some Sunday school story, but it's not biblical. It's not the truth. And there's so much more that Wyatt says that's just completely off the wall. And it would take hours to go through. But if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe right now. Subscribe right now so that you would be the first to know the next time I post a video. And don't forget to like. Thanks again. Blessings.